Hello and welcome to another episode of Feathercast. I'm Rich Bowen, and in this podcast, as you know, we talk about Apache projects and other Apache-related topics. And today, I'm speaking with Nikita Ivanov about the NLP Craft Project. This is in the incubator. It's been in the incubator for almost two years, year and a half, something like that. So thank you for taking time to speak with me. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Let's start with the basics here. I I can read the website, obviously. It says that it's an API. NLP Craft is an API to convert natural language into actions. Can you give us a little more color around that? What does that mean? The whole NLP scene, and if, and if you're kind of familiar with this, you probably will, uh, will, will guess what I'm trying to say. But if you're not familiar, you know, for most of the folks, NLP is a natural language processing. The natural language processing is a literally half a century umbrella term for all kinds of processing of a natural language, anywhere from language translation to generation of language to statistical analysis to all kinds of different things. And there's a dazzling environment of uh, or a set of frameworks, libraries, projects that deal with this topic. It's almost like saying, you know, a big data or cloud computing, it's a kind of overarching term. The natural language interface is a very specific area that deals with a very specific task. How do I uh, provide a natural language interface to my application? Essentially think about the Siri and Amazon Alexa, things like that, mm -hmm. but not for a consumer applications, most likely, but more predominantly for a narrow domain specific enterprise use case. So that's where the natural language interface is all about. So LP Craft as a project really came um, Sort of out of frustration. Let me just give you a bit of a background here. It's, as a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting to me. They, another project that I'm involved with, the Apache uh, Social Foundation, the Apache Ignite, and sort of my day job is part of the Apache Igniting company called Gridian Systems behind it. And it kind of came from the same kind of frustration with memory computing back in many years ago. So when it comes to NLP Craft, um, let's take a look at the current NLP Craft ecosystem. Essentially, as I mentioned, the, the, the idea about NLP Craft came a number of years back, and it was, you know, one of the driving motivators behind it was kind of dissatisfaction with existing status quo with NLP systems. So NLP ecosystem back then and today can be really characterized by proliferation of a mostly half-baked project addressing esoteric academic research topics, focusing on predominantly low-level NLP problem. Well, kind of in the same time trying to solve the higher level task of language comprehension, for example, leaving the users with these frameworks with, well, heavy uh, lifting in the downing development task. It also didn't help that uh, most of this framework and libraries were all using Python, which simply isn't suitable really for the modern enterprise software development. On the other hand, the commercial offerings like Siri and Alexa uh, were really extremely closed in, proprietary and very limited in the feature set. Uh, many of this, you know, commercial tooling were really geared towards the non-technical users. We should also remember that, you know, back in a few, you know, whatever, five, four, maybe three years ago, industry as a whole was going through a phase of fascination with chatbots that surprisingly ended just as quickly as it started. Well, yet another problem, you know, really plaguing this community is a, a semi-automatic reflexy of to shoehorn every problem into the mold of neural networks and cast every solution in a lot of statistical linguistics. And you know, while for many applications like sentiment analysis, name identity detection, translation, maybe speech recognition, this probabilistic approach is valid, even if you ignore the massive time sink of kind of preparing and maintaining the custom corpus and training data sets. Most of the real life enterprise natural language interfaces simply cannot work in a probabilistic way. This is something actually myself and the, and the community of NLP Craft learned early on in life of the project. I can give you a couple of examples just to illustrate this point because sometimes this sounds a little bit provocative. Because today, everything is a neural network, right? Everything is an ideal. Think about this. Uh, while a typical business user would happily accept a probabilistic result for sentiment analysis. In fact, it doesn't really matter if you say your Twitter feed is 85 or let's say 87% of a positive at a given time, as long as it's turning in the right direction, right? The same business user will simply reject the system that, um, let's say for the question, what is the, my average sales price in the last quarter? 
will give the answer with the confidence probability less than 100%. Most of them, all business analytics operations can operate on a probabilistic basis. Just imagine, you know, again, just walking in the bank and asking what your, you know, bank account balance, <laughs> and, and the clerk telling you that most likely <laughs> it's 100 bucks. It, it just doesn't work that way. So all of this issues and really teething problem, you know, results in the hard to use, sort of an overcomplicated Python based framework that seemingly require an inordinate amount of time to develop something tangible and useful, which is, you know, still essentially a kind of negative brush on top of an LP is that it is just, you know, overly complicated for no reason. So that was, you know, kind of long story of a backdrop, what led to NLP craft development. In the community, in the, in the initial group of the developers, decided to build a framework that would focus solely on solving a one problem in the most effective, productive way: how to build a natural language interface to be used by common, you know, modern applications. And hence, this all this list of sort of features and characteristics of the Craft. It's a it's a Java first project. You know, um, you can obviously use any JVM language. It's built in Scala, as a matter of fact, but it has you know all the APIs that's available to any Java ecosystem language, Java, Kotlin, Groovy, and Scala, all have been used. It's really built with the modern ideas. It's really, you know, isolates you from the low level plumbing of NLP, all the limitations, thematization, tokenization, all of these fancy words. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's based on, on another project of, from Apache Software Foundation, Open NLP. And it has pluggability both for Open NLP or Stanford Core NLP, which is the two major Java-based low level NLP toolkits. And it basically adds a lot on top of that. One of the you know unique characteristics of NLP craft is really its intent based processing. That is by far the most advanced implementation of these ideas anywhere from Alexa or Cortana or or dialogue pro from Google. Uh, this is the kind of in a crown jewel of some of the early achievements of that project. Next week is Apache <clears throat> And you're giving a talk there entitled Adding Natural Language Interface to Minecraft Using Apache yep. NLP Craft. That sounds really cool. But give us yeah. some other examples of things that have been built using this project, you know, ranging from, from Minecraft to, to whatever else. What, what have you got in your demo kit? Obviously, it's it's early incub incubation project, so we don't really have that many uh, production commercial usage. Uh, but we do have quite a few examples and quite a few early projects where it's been used. One of the coolest examples we have, Minecraft is cool, obviously, but, you know, it's, it's um, mostly a halo effect from Minecraft, which is, you know, my kids playing, and I'm sure it's yeah. around the world playing. And if you know Minecraft, it, it, it has the arcane system of all those commands and, you know, shortcuts you can use. And we just added a natural language interface. You can say, hey, make it raining or make it night or, you know, whatever, long or short, you know, request, but, you know, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool example that I think ships with an LP craft is that about a, a smart home light switch. Think about this. You can, you know, as it actually exists today, to a certain degree, I think there is a, a, a uh, skill in Alexa that you can actually use, but it's a pretty rudimentary in Alexa. And with about literally about a hundred lines of code, think about this, literally the whole example, by the way, it does not include the actual light switching. So you can use Arduino sure. or HomeKit for that. But just the whole NLP part takes about 100 lines of code entirely. Model, Java, Scala, Groovy code, everything you need. And it gives you a, all you have to have is about 100 lines of code. And you can literally um, talk to your light switches. You know, you can say, turn light switch in the garage or light up the kitchen and all kinds of things. And the cool thing is that it's literally a natural language. That's one of the, you know, important characteristics that you don't have to use the robotic phrases in a specific order with specific grammar and whatnot, which is the essentially plague for a systems like Alexa and Cortana, because they're simplistic in a way they translate the intents and they have to be very specific in how do you mm -hmm. say that. You can say, hey, you can, you can say like, turn on lights in my garage. Now, Alexa probably will get it. But if you want to say like something, hey, can you light up my garage, please? Mm -hmm. Guarantee, unless there's specific skill for that, design for that, it will not work. And in OP craft, you know, that is actually taken care of. You know, you can very easily create a model uh, that will take a, a normal spoken language. 
And so the, the really cool part of that, again, I repeat, is that all of that comes with absolutely no deep learning, nothing to prepare, nothing to train. It's a very procedural probability, you know, a non-probabilistic way to define this. So you can test it very effectively. You can uh, develop it very quickly and effectively uh, and whatnot. Now, I've always been asked this question, you know, when I kind of talk about it. So you guys don't use the uh, machine learning. Well, we don't use deep learning for that specifically. Uh, we use all of this in the different places. Uh, why? Why is it different from everybody else? And there's obviously a, a, a limitation. The traditional kind of neural network deep learning approach allows you to have a broad applicability. I mean, if you can get a, I don't know, bird-like size, you know, a data size to train, you can really have a, a sort of a boil the ocean approach. Mm -hmm. You can really start understanding all different types of conversations and different subjects and topics. In our approach, which sometimes called semantic modeling, we really target a narrow domain specific language, you know, uh, subset, if you will. So you can build a model to turn up your, to turn up, you know, to manage your light switch in home. This model will not work for ordering pizza in restaurants. Okay. So you have to create a new model for that. Got it. From an academic standpoint, that's a little bit of a limitation because everybody in academia wants to create, you know, next, you know, general artificial intelligence and understand all kinds of things. For the real world application, I'm a strong believer that you have to have much more narrow solutions that actually work much better in a specific use case. The project is still in the incubator and it's moving, it appears to be moving pretty quickly with a release almost every month for the last year or so. You just released 090 in July. What's right. new in there? What is still to do? And what's your path to graduation? When do you expect to be at a point where you want to graduate? It is still an early project. The project team is pretty, pretty small and focused. I, I don't believe that we're looking at graduation. And again, I'm just looking at my past experience with Ignite and uh, how long it took and how much of how many resources it required to actually graduate yeah. the project to a certain degree. So I, I think NLP Craft is just you know an early stage. I think we're still a number of years. And again, looking at ASF, you know, there's no pressure to graduate. Every sure. project has a different rhythm and tempo and Unfortunately, NLP projects in general have this complexity around them that right. is just unavoidable. It, it takes time. And uh, from a business perspective, it's always a negative, right? You want to have something quick and meteoric rise and, you know, and whatnot. Unfortunately, not every project qualifies for that. If you look at many projects, that they, they take years and years to mature and go through phases. What I know from a history of projects, and that was at the beginning of the project, it's really in kind of the second phase of it. There's a lot of interesting new stuff being developed in it. Uh, I think uh, in the last nine months, the project released what's called the IDL, it's Intent Definition Language Industry First, dedicated language to define intents. Very advanced stuff. And I'm saying it with a straight face. It's a really interesting stuff. It really helps a lot to define a non-trivial intent. Something that's really plaguing the something like Alexa or, you mm -hmm. know, dialogue flow is that, you know, everybody got fed up with the simplicity and triviality of yeah. many things and then at any minute anybody wants to step left step right it just breaks down and it's that's where this dissatisfaction with the current nlp ecosystem is all about so we're trying to fix that we're trying to bring sophistication to the next level where you can truly define a, an interesting intense not some trivial ones uh, so that's part of the project already so again there's a, quite a few you know things that you know uh, i think project is experiencing right now in terms of just in a development it's reaching a certain level of complexity where testability becomes a problem. I think I know that the core team of the project spent a lot of time, a little just testability of that, and and it's and it's you know it's and I, again I, I can also reflect back on my experience with Ignite. You know, it's always yeah. cool to develop some core cool parts and you you're so excited and then yada da da da, and then all of a sudden you know a couple of years later you realize you have a monstrosity here <laughs> that people are actually starting to use, and your 30% test coverage isn't is going to cut anymore <laughs> because people start stopping on this you know, rakes left and right. Yeah, there's all exciting parts to develop and there's just, you know, literally a house called keeping and technical debt issues that needs to be addressed in the project. That's usually where the SF project kind of slowed down because there was not exciting parts. Community kind of, you know, spreads a little bit and it takes a little bit of time. That's, I think, a natural growth. There's nothing wrong with it. Every project goes through it, yeah. Uh, and I think an LP crop is in this space in this space right now. 
as a complete layperson in this particular technology space, my impression is that this is that this is complicated, that it that it requires a lot of knowledge. And so my next question is, if somebody wants to get involved in the project, what are the prerequisites? What are they going to have to know in order to make a meaningful contribution? I, I think that's that perception is exactly what's hurting in an LP field. I remember when I started looking at it, and I wasn't the original developer. This, you know, there was the original team obviously in the project. Uh, but when I started basically become part of this project and helping out through, you know, joining in an incubation and whatnot, it was clear to me that it's a lot better to to not have any pre-existing LP background and to look at it from a okay. fresh perspective, because nothing there's nothing complex there to be honest. It's um, I can tell you for a fact that Ignite technologically is a more complex project. Is more sophisticated because it does require, you know, significant kind of academic background on certain parts of that. NLP is not that, to be honest. And um, in, in my opinion, the the lesser of existing background you have in NLP, and the more of a kind of a let me look at the things from a fresh perspective back, attitude is better for this project. Technically, project is in Scala, so if you know Scala, you're good to go. If you don't know Scala, it's about time to learn it. <laughs> That's a great project, actually, to do that. It is one of the significant code bases in Scala in existence. It's an interesting opportunity to learn Scala and really see how Scala really works in a large scale project. If I want to learn more about the project and get involved, where do I go? Where do you all gather to talk? Yeah, we are SF project, so you always start with the dev list, right? Uh, so you ping us on a dev list, uh, say who you are, what you're looking for. But obviously, you know, as everybody else, we're spending our time on Slack, on Gitter. All the initial conversations happened on the dev list, which is the rule here. Uh, and that's the best way to, to ping us. All the dev list information is on the website. You can easily find it and just ping just the community on the dev list and one of, one of the community members will, will take it from there. So, you know, I always remember when a spring framework came around about 15, 20 years ago. If you remember, before that was EGBs, Enterprise Java Beans. This mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, yeah. cathedral architecture, immensely complex and immensely, you know, kind of a convoluted and whatnot. And then it came a Spring and Spring like frameworks. And it really showed us that, you know, things can be a lot simpler, a yeah. lot more effective. Yeah. And you can do things, you know, 10 times faster. And I think what I hope the NLP craft will become is kind of the same driver for the NLP ecosystem. It doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be arcane. You can use normal tools. You can use normal ecosystem of the modern tooling and the IDEs and the frameworks around it and really build effectively the natural language interface applications. If you're listening to this or watching this before ApacheCon, do join us on Wednesday for Nikita's talk there. If you're listening to this afterwards, that video will be on YouTube and I'll add a link to that once that's published. Thank you so much for taking time to, to talk with us about this project. Good luck with your progress. Thanks a lot.